Hello and welcome to an all new reboot of Chartwise Women. My name is Erin Swenlin with DecisionPoint.com and I am here with my cohort, Mary Ellen McGonigal from MEM Investment Research. Welcome, welcome. We're so glad to have you back. We're glad to be back. And of course, the big change is here we are sitting on camera, Mary Ellen. I Definitely know something new. <laughs> We're entering finally the the current era. We're, we're coming into our own here. <laughs> Absolutely, it was great because I had to uh, clean up my office. So now I finally have a space that is worthy of my analysis. So I'm very happy to at least have had to clean my office uh, just to do this show. But yeah, you know, it worked out pretty well. How are you doing today? Very well. Yeah, I'm excited about this new venture and our new. Uh, formula and format here. So uh, I think it'll be exciting. Yeah, absolutely. So the ch show has changed just a little bit, but not too much. We're still very interested in educating and engaging you and mo most importantly, empowering you to take control of your own investment world. And to do that, we have decided to organize the show a little differently. We're going to be talking about bridging the gap. So what do we mean by bridging the gap? Uh, the idea is, Mary Ellen, right? We want to, yep. we're on the other side mm -hmm. and they are on the, they're either on their journey on the way or right. you want, or we have to, to hand, take a hand out and say, hey, come on over. This is something you can do. And that's why we want to be here. So we're the veterans standing mm -hmm. on the other side and we're going to be there to reach our hand out to you and help you cross that gap so that you can get to a position where you're where we are where you have confidence in what you do you understand it and are able to really take control and so mm -hmm. i think it's going to be a lot of fun talking about these types of bridging the gap themes that we have so right it should right. be very interesting yep all with an eye towards sharing our expertise. So one of the and, things we're going to talk about, right, is anchor points. Yes, you bet. And each and every week we will have an anchor point, something that's really going to drive our show, a theme, if you will. And this week it is momentum investing. And Aaron and I are going to share our experience with that, what how we define momentum and share with you some charts as a way to instruct and inform you into just how powerful momentum can be in your investing. So uh, that will be today. And of course, moving forward, we will continue to expand our repertoire and share with you uh, other different points. Absolutely. And I think momentum is really such a basic one that everybody needs to understand. I mean, we talk about price all of the time. You see price charts. But one of the things that you can use to really improve your trading and to understand um, the possible moves that are going on with price is to study momentum. And it's really not that hard of a concept. Um, you might hear a lot of people talking about being momentum traders. Are you a momentum trader, Mary Ellen? Uh, through and through. Yes, it's in my blood. And that momentum is all about the movement. And momentum can run both ways. It can be to the upside, of course, when a stock really gets going. And then that opposite where the momentum shifts to the downside. So uh, again, we're going to be sharing with you some, some really classic examples and ways. I know my work is entirely centered around getting in front of the momentum. I always say getting in front of these big movers just as they're taking off. And if you can get behind that concept, and again, we're going to share with you some ways that you can do that. It's really going to make a big difference uh, in your performance. And uh, yeah. Right. Absolutely. And I would have to say I'm a momentum trader as well. Most of my subscri <laughs> subscribers are familiar with that. And the folks in my trading room also know that I am a momentum trader. And, and really what we're looking at with momentum is just trying to get in kind of early on a move, but we want to have that confirmation that momentum is shifting to the upside before we get into a trade. And of course, if you want to exit, 
you know, looking for momentum when it starts to slide or turn down gives you that opportunity to at least evaluate whether you want to stay in an investment or not. So, you yeah. know, one of the the great points of momentum is, of course, that, you know, it does give you, it is lagging sometimes as an indicator. We talk about lagging, lagging and leading, but a lot of times it does help you lead into an investment. That's right. Well, let me bring up your chart, Mary Ellen, because I know we have a couple we want to share just to really um, give you an example of how momentum works. For me, momentum, there are drivers that really cause that momentum to shift and take place. And for me, it's going to be a, a number of different factors that are going to be that driver. So here we have an example. This is a Oh, FTCH Farfetch. It's a luxury retail pl online platform. And what I wanted to draw your eye to was that November period. And this is a stock that was on my MEM Edge report. It went on to gain uh, 98% from trough to peak. But using that arrow again in that November period, you can see from my work, the momentum shift two different items here. One is the very big volume on that beginning of November period. And in that, it did break above those key shorter term simple moving averages. And there was a driver and it was all about an outside investor, a large Chinese company infusing capital into Farfetch. It got Wall Street very excited and the stock really took off. And so from there, once that momentum shifts to the upside, because we also had a nice multi-month base breakout, the stock then finds support as it continues to advance. I have a blue line and I reference that five day simple moving average. And for my work, this is a very key component because once that stock takes off, that I convert my chart to include that five day because the momentum shift has happened. It's on the move to the upside. So pullbacks to that five day become an ideal buy point. And then as we move further, we can take us to that March period. And there we have that upside momentum shift. Again, volume is going to be that key component that's telling me it's breaking below key support. It broke below that 50 day simple moving average on very big volume. And this was during a period of decelerating earnings. And then your outside momentum indicators can also be quite helpful with the RSI turning negative as well as that MACD. So hopefully you can see from this chart that momentum, it's both the technical chart and it's the shift with, with volume, but also there are catalysts that really get that stock going. And from my work, it is going to be fundamentally driven. Absolutely. I think that looks great. Let's take a look at Fifth Third Bank. This is a whole different area. It's banking. Uh, the growth numbers aren't always going to be quite as high, but I again want to draw your eye back to that November period and of last year when the momentum shifted. And a lot of it is because the company came out with earnings that were well ahead of estimates and other dynamics. So we can see the big volume when the stock broke out of the base and gapped up and began into an uptrend. And nice. so, right. And so again, it is fundamentally driven. And then I'm going to, for my work, I like to take a look at the sector chart, XLF. And back in that October, November period, a number of banks were coming in with earnings well ahead of estimates. Uh, banking stocks were down year to date 27%. So they were kind of due a nice bounce. So, um, the upside momentum then again moves into place all the while. For instance, in January 2021, that big gap up there, all earnings driven, and uh, you're off to the races, so to speak. But really, it is that base breakout on volume coupled with news that drives the stock higher until it shifts there in June and the upside momentum uh, shifts to the downside. Yep, As absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go, I want to show a, a chart or two here too, just to give a basic background of momentum. Now, I use a different momentum indicator. It's called the price momentum oscillator. 
It's a decision point created momentum oscillator. So I've grown up using it, if you will. So that is really where I find my momentum shifts. And so I've marked just right here when you get that crossover to the negative side and then on those positive crossovers, a green vertical. And you can see really how it does help you get in on a move. It helps you get out of a move. Granted, you may have to take a little bit of um, a decline, possibly lose out on a little bit of rally, <clears throat> but that is just part of the part of what we have to do when we're momentum traders, because we really want to look for some confirmation and that can help you quite a bit. So you can see that uh, you usually are going to get in at the right time if you're just looking at crossovers, but then you can also just look for those shifts in momentum. You don't necessarily have to wait for a crossover. So if you're looking just at these shifts in momentum, that could also help you get out of a stock at the right time and get into a stock at the right time. So I wanted to show that. And then I just had a few charts that kind of give you an idea of uh, what momentum really is and how we measure it. So there are a few times where you may not understand why momentum is doing what it's doing. So in this case, when momentum is flat, but price is going up, it's kind of like, mm, I, don't, I don't understand. Why are we not seeing momentum shifting upward when price is moving upward? And really what it is, is to think of uh, the momentum as uh, your foot on the accelerator, if you will. So you are going up here, but what it's telling you is that at this point, you're holding that foot, you know, when you're, when you hit the freeway and you've met speed, you just keep your foot on the accelerator at that same level. And so that's really what's going on here. And then there's also the, the look of when the momentum is moving down, but you have price moving up. Is that a big problem? Well, really, again, it's telling you in this case that you're getting a deceleration of that rally. Mainly your foot is now kind of letting up on that accelerator. And so when your accelerator foot's going this way, that tells you that momentum is gonna start shifting lower. So it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna see momentum follow price exactly. And usually when you see these types of um, action, that does give you a little bit of a hint that, okay, well maybe this move is getting ready to, to die out. Yeah, and I can see volume is a big part of that as well. Absolutely. All okay. right, we will be back shortly uh, after this break. And Mary Ellen and I are going to talk a little bit more about our runway. What if you could look beyond price and identify big moves in the market before they happen? That's why we created the Moxie Indicator Minutes. Hosted by me, T.G. Watkins of Simpler Trading, the creator of the Moxie Indicator. Each week, I'll provide you details about the indicator, what it does, and how it can work for you. Only on Stock Charts TV. All right, we are back from our break and we've been talking about momentum as our anchor point, if you will, in our new all, all new Chartwise Women reboot here. So it was great to hear a lot about momentum. We're talking about really, you know, you need momentum to take off right uh, on the runway. So, you know, you, you need that momentum so that you can get off the ground and start mm -hmm. heading skyward. <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah. So from here, how about you and I share a little bit of background, Erin? I know you and I came to this show uh, together, but from different paths, our runways were different. So uh, you'd like to just share a little bit about uh, how, how sure. you got in this spot here. Sure. Here's, here's my runway story, if you will. So I did come up uh, definitely in a different path than you did, Mary Ellen. Um, mm -hmm. My path was really on the educational side. Um, I got my degree in math at USC, um, information resource management, master's. Uh, but really the, the main runway story for me is I had a great pilot who was piloting my plane and I was the co-pilot. And that was my father, Carl Swinlin. He really was my mentor. He taught me so much about technical analysis and how it works. 
And then at that point, I started to do my own studies um, through the Chartered uh, Market Technicians Organization, um, taking their CMT tests and, and studying that. And it really gave me a great uh, background to start doing what I do now, which is writing about what's going on in the market or being in my trading room and, and talking about different charts. So I came up really through that educational uh, point. But like I said, I had an excellent pilot to the plane when I was taking off and that was my father. And pretty soon he was able to hand the controls over to me. And now I pretty much um, run and do most of the uh, work that uh, we have at Decision Point. That's wonderful. And I know That's you great. came up from an entirely different way. So you tell I us your story. Did. Yes, my runway path started with a jaunt on Wall Street. And my first job was on the trading desk or the trading floor of Goldman Sachs, if you can imagine. And then from there, I did make it to another large Wall Street firm. I was a portfolio manager. I managed over $2 billion in assets. and just really loved the dynamics of the markets. But as far as my mentor and relating to stocks, it would be during my period with William O'Neill and company, the founder of Investors Business Daily. I was on the what's called institutional side. So I worked with portfolio managers, analysts for 15 years, traveled the globe, and more importantly, worked, taught them the O'Neill methodology. And that's all about momentum and how to get in front of these big winners, triple digit, thousand percent winners, just as they're taking off. And that permeates my work now. I founded MEM Investment Research, which, now, which is now being powered by Simpler Trading, uh, where I offer advice on the broader markets, stock selections, but again, all based on that O'Neill methodology. So now, you know, being women in this business, did you find there were any roadblocks or, um, you know, I know for me, it not that there's a good old boy network or anything, but I was definitely um, kind of an interesting person to be in the in the mix. I know that usually an eyebrow was raised. At least you know I'm older. I'm you know when I was in my getting my math degree at USC, I had professors who were really um, they they just didn't support me because I was a woman and you know it was all males pretty much in those classes and so I always felt like I had a little bit uh, of a performance you know had to really outperform in order to to be noticed and mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean did I you find that to be a problem? Not so much a problem, but I will tell you, I would go to conferences. Technology would be the uh, subject. There would be maybe a thousand Wall Street analysts and portfolio managers, and I would be one of a handful of women. So definitely stood out. But I did not find it a barrier so much, but it was very, very unique to be a woman, a female money manager. And um, But I loved carving that path because now it is quite a bit more common, of course, mm -hmm. a lot more women in the world of finance, which is wonderful. Well, and... I mean, look at Kathy Wood. She's mm -hmm. in charge of all of those ARC funds and she's really considered one of those experts out there as well. She was my client. I, visit, I visited her uh, many times. She was a partner at a hedge fund in New York. So uh, we were in the uh, trenches together, if you, if you wow. will. Wow. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah, I, there were, uh, you know, a few women that I looked up to back then. Um, Linda Ratchke is one that I always felt like bro broke the glass ceiling in some regard. Mm -hmm. She was like the only blonde woman in, in the Pacific Stock Exchange. She said it was always very interesting for her, uh, you know, and, and the um, just the reactions of the men that were there. But overall, I mean, I think we can agree. I mean, the the industry has a very large umbrella and always really has. It's just, I think that women maybe hadn't been interested in that area of um, mathematics or technicals. That there sort actually, of thing. I would argue, and you alluded to this earlier, that there was definitely an old, uh, what would you say, boys, good old boys, boys network. network that was hard to uh, break through. I did, I was, uh, I tried 
investment banking for a minute, and it just was not ready for a female. It was very, very much the good old boy network. There was no breaking through. Now, this was a few years ago, but uh, again, good to see that we've really turned that corner and women, it's much more inclusive and they're starting to learn about it. Uh, there's still a way to go as far as introducing. Uh, my daughters went to an all girls school and they didn't talk much. They had a robotics club, but they didn't have a, uh, an, a media club. They didn't have a financial one, but um, hmm. we're, we're here. We're here to help bridge that gap. Absolutely. Right? And, you know, so, you know, at this point, I think we need to kind of wrap up the show, but what we want to do when we uh, do our shows is to at least leave you with kind of an action plan or an action point, something that you can do maybe to learn a little bit more, um, try and figure out where you want to be, uh, that sort of thing. And I know for me, I do have a YouTube video and there's going to be a link under this, um, this show. And it really, it will take you through what I call the building blocks of technical analysis. And I started it from just scratch, from what is a trend line to what is support and resistance, really the basics of technical analysis. And I have that video, there's even a follow on video, but I know that I, 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 when I created it, a lot of people uh, that were in, you know, doing this already said, you know, maybe this was basic, but it actually did kind of reinforce some of what I maybe had some, you know, areas that I didn't really study that I didn't know. So I think it's a pretty good uh, starting point. And then Mary Ellen, I know you have some. Uh... I do. Yes, there will be a link below as well. I would urge you to take a look. I participated in a podcast. It was put on by investors.com. I mentioned my affiliation with that firm, with their approach. There was a lot of synergy, but what was covered in the podcast was, again, that concept. How do I or how do you get in front of these fast moving stocks? What are some of the drivers? I did walk through historical precedent and shared stocks, what caused them to start to take off. And so I think you'll learn a whole lot by taking a look at that. We do, it is uh, using charts and you can listen to it or watch it. Uh, again, that link is going to be down there below and you'll want to look for my name and you can go ahead and access it. But educational and informative, something to help you with your runway so that you can take off as well. Absolutely, because that's what we want is everybody everybody to be able to do that. And I think we are wrapping it up here for today. Thank you for joining us on our inaugural show. And we have lots more that we are going to be sharing with you throughout the week. So please join us on our next show. Yes, every Thursday. Absolutely. We would love to have you come into our room here and uh, our living room, as we like to say, our offices and help you learn more about technical analysis and how it can help you with your trading. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.